and um, because we want this to be the first really big year of me, and I think it can be. I'm very grateful you're all here. Um, are we live now? Okay. Uh, I want to welcome Ridgecrest, Puckett, South Georgia, Bivens, and Trayvins live. And then in the live stream, we have several schools from all over the Texas Panhandle, and this is very exciting. I want to tell you how you can participate if you're in the live stream. There is on the front screen, you scroll down to the bottom and have a chat box and you type in your question uh, beneath the video play. And then uh, it will be text to me and we'll get the question to Nigel and Sarah so that uh, the people who are not sitting in here live also get a chance to participate. And now that um, I think all of the perfunctory is out of the way, I want to uh, give you every minute with Nigel and Sarah that you can possibly have. They are a young couple. They, Sarah was in his professional choir in New York and they met and uh, formed a team that is second to none. And let me tell you some things to look for. He is fabulous at transcriptions. Is there anybody up here that knows what a transcription is? Anybody? No? Okay, well you will after this. These are pieces that were not originally written for organ, but for full orchestra. And he looks at the whole orchestra score and transcribes it so he can play it on the organ. And here all the colors that you would have heard if the live symphony was played. And that's a 50 cent word that you now know. And uh, he's really one of the best at it. There's only a few in every lifetime that really have the artistic uh, gift to understand and do that and then be able to pull it off on the organ. And um, Sarah is a fabulous mezzo-soprano and they do things together and he will do some things separately. So let's give a warm welcome to Nigel Pop. Thank you very much, Margaret, and welcome to you all. It's so exciting to see so many of you here, and of course, welcome to everyone that's watching online. This is a real thrill for Sarah and myself, not only to be in Amarillo and in this magnificent church playing this wonderful organ, but to be able to, to be here with all you children here today and to talk about music, talk about the organ, give a demonstration, let you hear some music, and of course, there'll be plenty of time for questions. Now, I also would like you to put up your hand at any time. When you think of a question, you put up your hand, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Um, but we also will have questions at the end. So, Margaret mentioned transcriptions. Transcriptions is like a translation. Shakespeare wrote in English, but there's no reason why Russian people or German people should not be able to read Shakespeare. So it's translated into a, their own language. Similar as with a transcription. It's music written for one medium, transferred to another medium. So in the case of music, often it's transcribed for the orchestra. And I have taken liberties with much music to arrange it for the organ. So. I'm going to start now with an excerpt from an overture to the occasional oratorio by George Frederick Handel. And we will talk about him shortly. So here's a few moments of some orchestral music played on the organ by Handel, one of the most famous and greatest composers.
Thank you. Before we go on with music, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and how I came to be here today. You probably wonder, where am I from? I have this very strange accent. And I'm from a country called New Zealand, which is a very long way. Does anyone know where New Zealand is? How many hands can I see? A few over here. Well, New Zealand, a few over here. Can someone tell me, where's New Zealand? Correct, it's near Australia. That's well done. That's very good. It's near Australia, relatively speaking. From here, from Dallas, it's about a 15 hour flight. You go across the Pacific Ocean for a very, very long time. And yes, as this young boy said, it's near Australia. So that's where I was born, and that's where I grew up. I have a very musical family. My mother was a piano teacher. And my father learned the organ when he was a teenager. So I heard a lot of music at home. I was taken to concerts, especially the or orchestral concerts. And most of all, of course, going to a church very much like this. And the church where I went when I was a little boy had a magnificent and very large organ, very like this one here. So I feel very at home here. And hearing that organ was very influential. Hearing its power, its majesty, the contrasting sounds it can produce, the wide dynamic range, and especially at times like Christmas and Easter when the church is packed and we're all singing those favorite Christmas carols, it's very inspiring. So I started learning the piano when I was eight. How many eight-year-olds do we have here? None. How many nine-year-olds do we have? A few. Okay, I started learning the piano when I was eight, and then I started the organ when I was 11. I was just tall enough I could reach the pedal board. You may have noticed I was playing with my feet as well as my hands. How many 11-year-olds do we have? Perhaps none. Okay. So, how many of you pl play learn a musical instrument. Raise your hand nice and high if you play a musical instrument. Good. But we should all have our hands up, really, shouldn't we? So, I continued music and I've never stopped. I've enjoyed it from when I was an eight-year-old, learning the piano, right through high school, the organ right through high school, and then I went on to university in New Zealand, and then I went from New Zealand to the other side of the world to a country called England and studied there. And then I came to America and did further study here. And I've stayed in America ever since. So this is my new home. I'm an adopted American. So that's a little bit about my background. I'm also going to talk about how the organ works. It's a very complex instrument, probably the most complex musical instrument, also the largest musical instrument. And we're going to demonstrate different sounds the organ can produce, especially this one here. It has a lot of orchestral instruments sounding stops on it. And then my wife, Sarah, here, she's going to talk a bit about her career and how we, as a duo, combined our musical talents together and performed concerts, and she's going to sing to you. So that's really exciting. She's got a lovely voice. She'll sing to you, and then I'll play some more music at the end. So, like a sportsman, someone that studies music has to be very diligent and very dedicated, and I practiced every day. I would practice the piano from before breakfast in the morning, early in the morning, and then I'd practice the organ after school. And that is very important. Whatever you choose to do, you ha it's very important to be dedicated and very consistent with your work. Now, the organ itself, how many of you here have heard an organ before? Just a few. You guys don't go to church here? You don't hear the organ in church? 
Yeah, a few hands over here. Oh, now you're realizing, of course, yes, the organ was at church. Yes, yeah, so a lot of us have heard the organ. Maybe not quite one as grand as this. This is very unique and very special. So you probably wonder, well, how does this thing work? The sound comes from all the way up here behind me in what we call the chamber. And that is where all the pipes are kept. And on an organ such as this, I estimate it's probably about 5,000, maybe even more, 6,000. Margaret, how many pipes are there? 6,742 pipes. So not a bad guess for 6,000. And that is a very large, on any, any scale, that's a very large pipe organ. But how does the sound get, what creates the sounds in the pipes? Well, what we have in the basement is a blower. It's an engine that generates air. And air then is transported up into the chamber and it's stored in what we call reservoirs, which are essentially the lungs. Yep, our lungs here have air. We breathe, the organ breathes, okay? So air is stored under these pipes. And then, of course, it's controlled by an organist at what we call the console, which is this item here. It looks rather like the flight deck of a 747. All these buttons and all these knobs and keys, very complex. So this controls the pipes sounding. Now the pipes themselves have a great range in size. The smallest is about this size, the size of a pencil. And that plays, do you think this is gonna play a very low sound or a high sound? Put up your hand if you think it's gonna create a low sound. Put up your hand if you think it's gonna create a high sound. Yeah, the high sound wins, all right? This pencil pipe would sound like this. Listen, listen carefully. Very high, okay. The largest pipes we have are 32 feet tall. That's extremely tall. I'm six feet, all right? So five times my height, more than five times my height. And they sound like this. Can you hear that? Oh, it's very low. Here's a louder one. Yes, yeah, so that sounds like a sort of trombone being very low. Now, we have different kinds of sounds, not only in, in length and pitch, length of the pipes and the pitch, but different sounding pipes. So what's very fundamental to an organ is what we call the principal diapason sound. This is the sound that's unique to the organ only. Then we have a whole range of orchestral colors. Now, how many of you have been to an orchestral concert, heard an orchestra? Or maybe you've seen an orchestra on TV? No? A few of you here? Good, good. A few of you over here? Well, we have, I'm going to get on the organ and I'm going to talk about a few different orchestral colors. So we have an oboe, for example. We also have cello.
by our nets. We have a lovely French horn. Then we have some more brass instruments, some trumpets. Even more of them. And probably the grandest stop on the organ is the tuba. And we also have some very delicate, soft stops. So you can be very quiet and listen to these ones. fades to a whisper, doesn't it? Okay, so now I'm going to play some more music and I'm going to incorporate all those instruments and I want you to listen out for the clarinet, the oboe, the flute, cello, all the quiet instruments, all right? So there we had the oboe and the clarinet, sorry, the oboe and the cellos talking to each other. One hand was playing one instrument, the other hand was playing another instrument. And then we can do combine more instruments together. Can you call that instruments? There we had, of course, the flute. Who heard the flute? And the violins. Now I'm going to play some of the brass instruments. And this will be coupled with a lot of the organ, the full, what we call the full organ. Who has heard the term pulling out all the stops? OK. Well, maybe the adults in the room have heard the, the term pulling out all the stops. Of course, it comes from the organ, so do your best. Keep nothing in reserve. So here is the beginning of this piece, and this is going to have all the stops pulled out, and then you're going to have some brass crashes.
you heard that. Yeah? A funeral. It did sound very dramatic, didn't it? And, and also, what sort of the crashing sounds? What sort of instruments make crashing sounds? You at the front. Anybody can help her? Crashing sounds next to you. A what? Can you say it louder? A wedding? Weddings have crashing sounds? Sometimes, I suppose, if they're really fun, right? I was thinking of an instrument that has a crashing sound. Cymbals. cymbals. That was what I was looking for. Well, of course, there are no cymbals in this instrument, but the sound sounds just like crashing cymbals. And was it loud or was it soft? Yeah, I saw some of you. You all put your hands on your ears, didn't you? It was a bit loud, but that also makes it very exciting, right? Very exciting. Now, you may have noticed that I have been playing with my feet. This time, I'm going to play a piece that is just with my feet. So what's very interesting we are. So what's very interesting about the organ is it's, you can't really see because the bench is in the way. But um, it also has a, you know, a pedal board, which is exactly like a keyboard, but Nigel plays it with his feet. Have any of you seen that piano in um, there's a store in New York City where there's a big piano on the floor? Yes, some of you have seen that, and you can run along it and play it. Well, it's exactly the same as that, apart from it's much smaller, and it's, it's, got, you know, it's made out of wood. So that's what Nigel does. So next time you see one of those pianos, you can play along on the floor and imagine you're an organist. But imagine having to use your feet, your hands. That's quite a lot of parts of your body to be using, right, and playing at the same time. You have to be able to multitask. How many of you can do lots of things at the same time? I think all the women are going to put their hands up, right? Yeah, girls and boys. Yeah, you can do lots of things at the same time. Good, good, that's important. Good, now I'm going to talk a little bit more about how science is related to the organ. I spoke earlier about the very tall pipes being low and the very small pencil size being high. All these knobs on the organ have a number, and that number tells us what length the bottom pipe is. Now, eight is the most common. So that pipe there is exactly eight feet tall. Now, if I halve in that pipe and play one that's four feet tall, It's what we call one octave higher. It's twice as high, isn't it? Twice as high. And then two foot. So we can combine all these. Eight foot, which is the same as the piano. Two foot and four feet. And of course, the pedal line is the bass. Think of a the double bass as in an orchestra. We have 16 and 32. Do we have any questions about the organ? So we know that air travels through it from a, from a blower downstairs. It's kept in a reservoir, and the organist pulls out stops. Let me get that in a minute. Pulls out stops, and all these stops have names, like, like French horn or clarinet or oboe, and they also tell the organist what pitch they're going to be played at. So do we have some questions about the organ? Yes. 
Can you speak up, Simon? Well, how, the question was, a very good question, how many pipes could there be? This organ is particularly large. It has almost 7,000 pipes. Now, if you look very carefully, you can see a few on the right-hand side. You can see a few on the right-hand side and on the left. But that's a very large chamber. So most of them are out of sight. So they're up to 7,000. The biggest organ in the world, however, is in Philadelphia in a departmental store. So when you go shopping there, you can hear the organ. And that has 30, almost 30,000 pipes. That's very unique. Another question. Yes? The question is, where is the air blower? The blower, the engine for the blower is underneath the church in the basement. That generates the air and that travels up in, in um, ducts to the organ chamber and it's kept under the pipes until it's needed for those particular pipes. Yes. Say again. How old is the organ? Well, that's an extremely good question because this church is quite new. This church is about 20 years old, but the organ is about 70 years old. And it used to live in southern Texas, and then it was transported to this church and especially put on here. It organ, the organ itself is one of the oldest instruments in the world. It goes back centuries and centuries. Of course, the organ was much smaller, and before we had electricity, if I wanted to play the organ, I'd have to ask someone to pump the organ. You've probably heard the term an organ pumper, and they step on the bellows to create power. Yes, with the pink top, yeah. Yes, in the second row, yes? Sorry? How much is the organ? You mean how much it costs? Oh, they're very expensive. Organs are very expensive because when you have 8,000 pipes, they are all handmade. There's a lot of materials that go in to the organ. There's some of the pipes are wood, as you can see on the left. Some are metal. They all have different shapes. So every part of the organ is made by hand. And of course, all the components in the console is very complex. There's lots of wiring that connects. So organs generally can cost, you know, a million dollars and more. They're very expensive. On the right-hand side, yes. How, how tall the organ pipes can get? They can get 32 feet tall. I am six feet, so if you can imagine five of me standing up on top of each other. That's pretty high. That's pretty high. We've got lots of questions. This is very exciting. Some on the left and right. Take some on the left for a start. Yes, in the blue top. Your question? Yes. The keys, how the keys, the pedal board made? How do they make them? Well, the pedal board is actually made of wood, but they work the same way as a keyboard on, for the fingers work. It's the same principle, but they just timber, so they, they're more durable because you play them with your feet. Okay? Oh, you're very kind. The question is, how am I so talented? Well, it's been many years of hard work, dedication, and lots of practice. So I'm sure many of you here are also talented in various different ways. And maybe one unique talent you have might come out as you grow older and spend more time developing that talent. The black buttons, good question, another good question. The question was, what are the black buttons on the organ? As I said, the organ is rather like a flight deck of an aircraft. These are what we call pistons, and pistons are a, a preset. 
that the organist can choose what sounds he wants, and at a flick of a piston, which for the fingers is these little white buttons, or for the feet, it's the black buttons, and they will pull out many, many stops instantly. Because when your hands are busy playing, sometimes, especially on an organ this big, it takes a lot to have all these stops come in and out. Okay, so when I did a concert here last night, I spent the previous two days getting familiar with this organ, trying out all the sounds, and then I set these buttons. So when I play, I can push these buttons. I can push, I can push these buttons, and the sounds of the organ that I chose will come out instantly. Well, lots of questions. Yes, front row here. I've been playing the organ for over 30 years. I started when I was 11 years old. And I've been very fortunate. I've, I've played all around the world. And th throughout the United States, I've played in 25 of the 50 states. Played in Europe, in Iceland, Austria, Paris, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, New Zealand, Australia. So it's been great fun. But I'm very lucky to be able to make a living doing what I really love doing. And it's especially when I have young children getting excited about the organ as we are today here. Yes, and the, um, yes, blue top. What is the highest? The highest note, okay, I'll play it. It's, you've got to listen very carefully to it. You want to hear that? Very, very high. Oh my goodness. The one of a fluorescent shirt. You got my attention. Sorry, I can't hear your question. Oh, those tabs there? They control transferring sound from one manual, from one keyboard to the other keyboard. This organ has four keyboards. One, two, three, four. And I can transfer sounds from the top down to the second, for example. All right, very good question. Yeah, this it's a very complex instrument, as I said. Yeah, big stretch out. Yes? How big can the organ get? Well, this is pretty big. This is pretty big. Um, as I said, the largest is a unique organ in a shopping store in Philadelphia. But this is about as big as I get. Some from over here. Yes, with a red shirt. Yes. Speak up. This organ, this organ was made about 70 years ago in a company based in Boston. Okay, and it had its first part of its life in southern Texas, and now it's found a new home in this church. Organs are very durable. They last for generations. Yes. Yeah. The question is, if it breaks, how do you fix it? Another good question. Well, it, it's really like anything. With a car, you've got to figure out what the problem is, and then the, an organ specialist will come along, he'll figure out what the problem is, and he'll make the, the, the correction to it, all right? So things, pipes can be very sensitive to humidity and temperature, so the organs have to be tuned. You know, when you go to an orchestra, the orchestra tunes before a concert, doesn't it? Because even a violin needs tuning every time you play it. So an organ can get out of tune, and a guy will come along, and he'll tap the pipe to make it perfectly in tune. OK, I'll come back to some more questions. I'm going to now have accompany Sarah, so you can hear how we combined as we travel as a duo. Sarah's going to, Sarah? OK, maybe it's time for you to sing. <laughs> it's on the, it's on the, yeah. 
So I'm going to sing for you all now. So what we, what we talked about earlier, about the organ, we said it used air, didn't we? Well, when we're singing, we also have to use air, right? Because if, if we don't use our lungs, we can't get through a sentence. We can't, we can't sing a long line. So I'm going to be singing some long lines, some short lines. I'm going to be using a lot of air. And I'm not going to use a microphone when I sing. Because when I sing, I don't need a microphone, because I've trained myself how to sing so that you can all hear. So I, I'm pretty sure you're all going to hear me. Um, but also, if you think about it, with a huge organ like this, you might wonder, how on earth can I sing above it? But listen carefully. So the song I'm going to sing is called Where Corals Lie. Corals are in the ocean, right? So this is a, a song from the sea pictures. It's by Edward Elgar. Thank you very much. So, could you hear me? Could you all hear me above the organ? 
Yeah? Good, I'm glad. So you see how singing, I'm using air, and the organ's using air. So they're actually very good instruments to go together. And when else do we use singing and organ? In choir, right? In church, sometimes you have choirs. Are any of you in a choir? Or do you sing at school? Surely you sing at school. Or do you only sing in the shower? Do you only sing, you, in, you sing in the shower? Yeah, in the bath? You're only singing in the shower and the bath? Well, we've got to change that. We need to get you all singing. That'll be much more fun, right? Singing is fun because you end up meeting lots of great friends. And when I was growing up, I started singing when I was seven years old. Who's seven here? I'm sure we have some seven-year-olds, right? Yeah, great. So I started singing when I was seven. I was a little about, about your height, and I didn't have this voice when I started singing. I had to work very, very hard to sing, okay? So I started very young, learning all my notes, practicing every single day, but practicing can be fun, okay? Who likes to practice whenever they have to do things? Oh, good, I see some hands. What sort of things do you practice? What do you practice? Oh, brilliant, so she practiced keyboard and guitar. Yes, and you? Guitar, how many people play the guitar here? Whoa, that's a lot of people playing the guitar. How many people play the recorder? Anybody play the recorder? Okay, good, I, play, I started the recorder when I was little. Um, anybody play the flute? The flute, oh, I got some? Yeah, I started, I played the flute, that was my other instrument as well, playing the flute. Any pianists? Great, are you gonna become organist soon as well? Not sure, maybe, maybe one day, right? Could be fun, yeah. So. So to conclude, we're gonna, I'm gonna play one more very brief piece. It's, a, it's gonna really show the power and the majesty of this organ. And listen out for the trumpet fanfares, all right? And the, the last two lines are very quick and the pedal, my feet plays the melody at the very end, but very, very low and deep and powerful. One of the, the thrills of playing the organ. And then, to conclude, we'll have the last question and answers session. All right, so here's about one more minute of music and then we'll have some questions. Thank you, thank you. That's what we call pulling out all the stops. All right, you heard the full power of the organ there, from the low ones to the very powerful ones. So it's been lovely to speak to you all about the organ and about music. 
And I hope you go away feeling encouraged and inspired to pursue music, to listen to music, listen to classical music as well. And you never know, maybe in 20 years' time, I might come back here and one of you may be on this stage. So to conclude, let's have some more questions. Yes, you're very quick to put your hand up. How long? I've been in Amarillo, just this is my third day, and I, I fly back to New York City where I live this afternoon. So I've been in Amarillo three days. Here with a blue shirt. How do the pipes get filled? Well, there's air is kept underneath all the pipes. And when I choose a particular stop, a particular sound, air is ready to go under that line of pipes. And when I play the particular key on the keyboard, air will go through that exact single pipe. All right? Yeah, good question. It was a red shirt here. How? Well, the air is pushed up through the pipes and through very heavy wind pressure. So it travels all through the pipes and speaks. I've been playing the organ for over 30 years. Okay, I started when I was 11, so you figure out my age. With a black shirt. I had various teachers when I was a kid growing up in New Zealand, um, the, the church organist taught me, and then I had various teachers in England and here in America for my study. Pink shirt. Can I hear a question? What are the white things? All oh, these knobs. These knobs tell you what sounds there are on the organ. So I can choose clarinet, or I can play the tuba. So they all have names, and they also tell me how big the pipes are. So that will tell me what pitch, whether it's going to be a low sound or a high sound. Lucia, this organ is about 70 years old, OK? And it's got many, many generations to play to. Couple from this side. Pink shirt with stripes. Yes? Oh, the lowest note. Everyone likes to hear the lowest note. Or oh, this one here. Yeah, it sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Couple more from this side. Yes? Speak up. The loudest? Oh. <laughs> you want to hear the softest as well? Let me play you the softest, because that's really nice as well. You've got to listen carefully, though, for the soft. Yeah, with a gray, gray shirt, yes. How long does the organ last? The, the, question, the question is how long does the organ last? Organs last many, many generations. This organ is already 70 years old, and it's got a long way to go. It's going to be playing to many, many more people, generations in this church. They last a long time, especially when they looked after. Wow, look at these hands. I'm not sure we've got time for all of them, but yes. To learn all the notes? Well, it, it really depends on how big, how long the piece is. Um, but I, I practice many hours a day, so I can learn them pr pretty efficiently. Yes. Yes. 
How tall is the tallest pipe? Can anyone tell me how tall the tallest pipe is? Can anyone tell me how tall the tallest pipe is? Yes? Oh, <laughs> I was asking, can anyone, can anyone remember what I, what I said about how tall the tallest pipe is? Yes. Yes. Um, 18 feet. It's taller than that, 32 feet, right? 32. I'm, Margaret, how, how, tall, is, how, how tall is he? Uh, in the top of the lantern is 65 feet to the, uh, where the ceiling starts is 40 feet. Okay, so where the ceiling starts is 40 feet and the tallest organ pipe is 32 feet. To, to the very center here is 60 feet and the tallest pipe is 32. So, it's, so the tallest pipe is about half the height of the church. That's pretty high. Uh, I'm going to go up and put the lights on in the chamber so they can see them laying sideways at the Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. W Margaret's going to put the lights on in the organ chamber so you can see many more pipes. Yeah, let's have some more questions while she does that. There's a fluorescent sleeves. You're going to speak up for the questions. The where does that? Now, that's a really cool question. Let me tell you the Vox Humana. So, tell me what the Vox Humana is. The Vox Humana is one of the weirdest sounds you're going to hear on the organ. Um, vox in, is, means voice, and Humana, what do you think that means? Human, right? Human voice. So, it's supposed to sound like a human voice. But I think you, I think you might think it doesn't sound like a human voice. But think about Halloween, and you might hear, know what it sounds like. Do you hear that? It's like, like, like very quiet goats in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, Lucia. How old was I? I? I was 11 years old when I started playing the organ, but I learned the piano first, eight years old when I started the piano, with purple top. Organs have been around for centuries, all right? They were very small when they first started, maybe in the 1500s, 1400s, and in the 1700s they were pumped manually because we had no electricity in the 1700s, 1800s, and then in the 19th century when we invented electricity, we got the power so the organs could play without anyone having to manually pump the organs. Blue shirt, sorry, green shirt in the front. What's that? How many keys? The organ has 61 keys right on each manual. Sixty-one keys, I think it is. Lost count on the way up. <clears throat> and then we have four keyboards on this organ. So many, many keys. That's why there's so many pipes. That's why there are nearly seven thousand pipes. Yes. What's my favourite stop? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I like the French horn. Listen to this. One last question. Who's the? Oh, my, look at these hundreds of hands going up. Yes. How many times? The question is, the question is, the microphone works. The question is, how many times have I played the organ? I've lost count. I have been playing for 30 years, so I've played many, many different instruments. I've traveled all over the world, and I've really lost count how many organs I've played, but it's been great fun, it really is. It's, I'm very fortunate to be able to have a career doing something I love doing, and that takes me to travel, takes me to see new places and meet new people. Uh, 
we have a uh, we have a question from the uh, live stream. How many strings are in this organ? String size. Stops. Sixteen. Oh, Sixteen. Okay, the microphone. Oh. <laughs> the question from a live stream. The question from a live stream is how many string stops do we have in this organ? And this organ is actually quite unique. We have 16 string stops. All right. Hmm? And a string, so what do you think string stops are? Strings. Who can tell me what they think? Maybe someone from this side. Can anyone tell me what you think string stops are? What, what instrument in an orchestra uses strings? Yes. Violins, exactly, correct. Violins and violos, cellos and double basses, all right? So we have a good selection of that on this organ as well. Any more online questions? Let's give Nigel and Sarah a great big round of applause.